dude, I'm really happy the Leafs won. Why do I feel like there's a butt coming? Did you notice it kind of smells down here? Well, yeah, it was kind of a big deal. I talked about it in yesterday's video. All right, I didn't watch yesterday's video. You didn't? No, is that a crime? No, I just thought you watched the video. What, am I supposed to sit here and watch all 82 videos? I mean, 82 games! That's so many games you said it yourself! You know, I mean, it might miss a couple. I'd like them to watch most of them. Oh, you're dreaming. He's dreaming. Let's go! Good. We all feel Stop! good. Stop! Never gets rusty! What am I doing? Get in my kitchen! Producer Drew, can you fix all this? <laughs> and when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can crumple crumple yeet! Saw that going differently. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Hey man, I just, I just want to let you know they won. It's uh, it's 1 a.m., so I, I figure you don't really want to treat right now. You, your ears didn't even move. They didn't even move. You happy they won? I'm going to leave you alone now. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, Riley's back. Six. Leafs win! Seven to three over the Vegas Golden Knights for their six consecutive victory. There is nothing to complain about. Nothing at all. Is the next game at 10 o'clock also? It's not? It's not. That's, oh, that's even better. That feels like win number seven right there. Dude, dude, dude. I, I, listen, I know a lot of you don't stay up and watch the 10 o'clock games. It's fine. It's on a weekday too. Back to back weekday 10 o'clock games. But if you missed the first period of this Leafs game against the Vegas Golden Knights, you missed what I might consider the best period the Leafs have played this season, and I'm trying to figure out where it ranks in terms of the best periods we've seen the Leafs play since the Matthews era began in 16-17. Like, I'm not even kidding. It wasn't perfect. There were some imperfections. There was a little bit of luck. But let's talk about it. First and foremost, in the first minute, the Leafs have to contend with this. There is a puck that bounces up off of Martin Jones and it lands behind him. Here's where the puck was, all right? You see it? There it is. It's very close to going in the net. Surely nobody could swoop in and smack it away from the goal line that quickly. And you're right, they don't. Again, here's where the puck lands. Here's where it bounces to. The puck bounced backwards. I'm trying to think of the last time or if I've ever seen this. It's one of those things where, yes, the puck is made of vulcanized rubber. It always can happen. Since when does it? You see pucks die in the snow on the ice all the time, although this was in the first minute. There probably wasn't much snow. B the, seeing it bounce away from the goal line, like not spin and do that little flippity floppity, it went dunk dunk. Lilligren sweeps it away after that, and the Leafs survive, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Who knows what the score might have been if that thing goes in. What ensues is some like high traffic action. Leaf shot, Vegas shot, Leaf shot, Vegas shot. There was a part like very early in the game where both teams were on pace for 50 or 60 shots. And if you can believe it, I can't believe it looking down at the game sheet. You know how the Leafs uh, did in the first period? Don't spoil it for anyone who doesn't. The Leafs' first goal of the first period happened at the exact halfway mark. Leafs with some pressure in front of the Vegas net and Aiden Hill. The puck comes to Jake McCabe fortuitously. Bam! I would love to tell you that he paints it right off the bar and in. Nope. Off of Alec Martinez, and then Aiden Hill, and then in. The Leafs get the first goal, it's one nothing, and what follows is 10 minutes of the Leafs mauling the reigning Stanley Cup champions like a tiger. Ryan Reeves does a great job, the, the beginning of a great night for the fourth line, keeping the puck in, keeping the Vegas Golden Knights from wrapping the puck around the boards. David Camp picks it up, streaks across the net, holds it, holds it, holds it, and just tucks it past Aiden Hill, who's got like the best save percentage in the NHL. Two goals in 70 seconds, and the Leafs have a 2-0 lead. In three minutes and 10 seconds after that, Bobby McMahon gets a touch of the puck, because of course he does. That McMahon-Robertson-Tavares line causing problems for the Golden Knights. Nick Robertson gets the puck, a nice little pass to JT, who just rips the thing in. Last night, he scored his first even strength goal since December. Guess what? Even strength goals in back-to-back -back games, 
I think they might keep these lines together. It's 3 nothing, And then less than two minutes after that even, William Nylander looks like he's gonna shoot. He goes around the net and who's he gonna give it to? Chaos in front and somehow Vegas forgets all about Max Domi. He hesitates for a long time and fires a muffin and it gets stopped. But then he gets the puck back and he scores! Assist from Nylander and Bertuzzi and the Leafs are up four nothing after one after almost getting scored on in the first minute but a miraculous bounce prevented that okay steve they went up four nothing that's really good but surely since the beginning of the matthews era they've done that they outshot the vegas golden knights 23 to 14. 14 is actually a decent amount of shots you're not gonna believe this anyone who actually watched the game but the Vegas Golden Knights shot total in the second and third period combined did not equal what they mustered in the first. It was announced that the Leafs' 22 shots on goal tied a record for most shots allowed by the Golden Knights in a period. Now I see it's 23, so that would be the record. The goals were unassisted by Jake McCabe, fourth line, third line, second line, all even strength because there wasn't a single penalty in the first period for either team. 4 nothing lead over the reigning Stanley Cup champions without the Matthews line even getting in on the action and just straight up looking like the better team for 90% of the period, second half of a back-to-back -back on the road. Have the Leafs had better periods this season or over the past few years? Maybe, but within the context of what it is, you're playing Vegas, man. The reigning champs, you're in their building, it's the second half of a back-to-back. -back. I'm sorry, that's one of the best periods I have ever seen this group play. Now, any Golden Knights fan watching this is like, well, Steve, yes, the reigning champs, but you're leaving out some details, yeah. Here's the thing. Aiden Hill started in net, he got pulled, the fourth one was on Logan Thompson, I didn't even mention that part. This is the Golden Knights decor, it is extremely good. Alec Martinez, Alex Petrangelo, Braden McNabb, Shea Theodore, who's back after missing 35 games, Nicholas Haig, and Zach Whitecloud. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that's like the sixth defenseman they won the cup with. Here's where the asterisk kicks in a little bit. Oh boy, is the Golden Knights forward group a world of hurt right now. Barbashev and Marcheseau are your top line wingers. That makes sense. Oh, it's Nicholas Waugh in the middle. Paul Cotter, William Carlson, Keegan Colasar, Brendan Brisson, Chandler Stevenson, Michael Amadio, Mason Morelli, Byron Fraze. Hmm? Leaf fans, that, the actual Byron phrase, him, he's still here, and uh, Sheldon Rempel. They got like at least four guys from the Henderson Silver Knights, that is the actual name of their AHL affiliate, on their roster, not just on their roster, in their forward group. Like the next time the Leafs play Vegas, which I believe is next week, they could have Jack Eichel back. And obviously they're without Mark Stone. Those are two just enormous losses for the Golden Knights. And Paul Cotter playing the role of Sean Dursey in this one. Uh, the Leafs did not like him. He did not like them. Matthew Nyes absolutely obliterated this human being. Like, huge shout out, huge kudos to Paul Cotter for staying in the game. And then what happened after that? Well, if you watched the game, you probably are about to say uh, a whole lot of clenching is what happened after that. And it's fascinating because you look down at what actually happened and it doesn't look that way at all. Leafs scored two in the second period. Vegas got one. Vegas got two in the third period. Leafs got one. Leafs won by four goals, which is how it ended at the end of one anyway. Which is literally what happened, but eh. 51 seconds into the second period, there's a bit of a defensive breakdown, and I mean a bit of a defensive breakdown. William Carlson rips the thing. It's a really good shot. You kind of like a save there, but it's a really good shot. Okay, okay, they're gonna get one. It's Vegas. It makes sense. And they like brought the pressure. It felt like they brought a lot of pressure. And once again, you look down, Vegas had five shots in the second. How did that happen? Or rather, not really happen. About halfway mark of the period, Max Domi decides to become Maximum Domi, taking the feed from, you guessed it, playmaking, puck-moving defenseman Simone Benoit, and he buries his second of the game. Seven on the season, second of the game. And I know you're dying to know the answer, Steve. How many assists does Simone Benoit have? Three. 
That was three. Does anyone on the team have less than that, you might be asking? Yeah, Ryan Reeves got his first assist as a Leaf in this one. I forgot to mention that earlier. God, I hope he kept the puck. And speaking of Ryan Reeves, a few minutes later, oh my goodness. Pontus Holmberg is attacking. He's got Jonathan Marcheseau with him, though. He has the option to take it to the net. It's probably not going to work. He could go around the net. Or the most obvious thing that he could do is drop it. Leave it for Ryan Reeves, who's right behind him, and Reeves can do whatever he wants. He can shoot it, he can pass it, probably shoot it. And that's what Marcheseau thinks, too. He's like, well, he's obviously gonna drop it. And Holmberg just went, psych, and drove the net, and ew. Dude, Marcheseau misreads it. Logan Thompson absolutely panics and leaves a huge chunk of the net to shoot at. Holmberg rips number three, rips a nastier goal than anyone scoring their third goal of the season should be able to. That's former Swedish League playoff MVP Pontus Holmberg, just a reminder. And at the end of the second period, the Leafs are up 6-1. Again, how could we have ever been nervous? Okay, this might have something to do with it. Uh, once again, a Leaf bit of a breakdown. March or so, he gets it back. He scores. Uh, you don't like what Holmberg did? Okay, he gets it back. 59 seconds in, okay. 26 seconds after that, you see Barbashev give it to Amadio, that's Leaf legend Michael Amadio, and it's in. And I suppose I wouldn't worry because the Leafs are still up three, but it is Vegas. It is on the road. It is the second half of a back-to-back. It is the Leafs! And like also the Leafs fading as this game goes, like it just makes sense from a, like a biological standpoint. You had a lot of energy at the beginning of yesterday's game and now it is the end of today's game and you're tired. And Vegas just foot to the floor, just driving as fast as they can all over the Leafs. And once again, I ask you, as someone who watched the game, tell me, how many shots did Vegas have in the third? Hmm? How many are you thinking right now? I know I already blew it earlier. How many are you thinking? You're probably thinking at least 15, 20. Dude, if I had to tell you, if I had to guess right now and I didn't know the answer, I would have said at least double digits. Seven. They had seven. Leafs had 10. Listen, anytime you give up two goals in 26 seconds and those 26 seconds happen in the first 90 seconds of the third period, you're not gonna feel good about it. Doesn't help that you're a Leaf fan and you've seen this movie before. But man, I thought the Leafs were good. Not to nitpick on account of they won 7-3, Martin Jones should have had at least one of them. And you're like, Steve, they must have blocked a ton of shots. 22, Vegas blocked 21. And then of course, Pontus Holmberg hilariously gets the drop from Matthews, just like he should have done with Reeves. Matthews then goes to the net. Holmberg fires an intentional shot pass to Matthews. Just tip number 52. And that is it. And that is the first ever game winning goal to put a team up seven to three. <laughs> Isn't that what it felt like? Gosh, we are just too anxious of a fan base. <laughs> and don't be like, no, Steve, just you. I was online. Everyone who is chronically online was nervous. Dude, it was a great game. Overall, the fourth line was fantastic. That might have been David Camp's best game of the season. Might have been Pontus Holmberg's best game of the season. Might have been Ryan Reeves' best game of the season, man. Like, he's been straight up effective. Robertson, McMahon, Tavares, good. Loving all the lines, honestly. And this is fun. They kept two of the D pairs together. Obviously, Benoit and McCabe and Brody and Lilligren, who I hope never break up. But as a result, they put Morgan Riley returning to the lineup with William Lagesson. I mean, that's William Lagesson, who, like, isn't even an everyday Leaf, getting into the lineup with the Leafs' best defenseman. That is a huge opportunity for him. And, and, on his birthday. And I love that. Was the whole game perfect? Well, no. They didn't win the game 12 nothing. That that would be great if they could just multiply the first period. Buddy, there's nothing to complain about. They're 6-0 and in their last six games. Five of those games were without Riley. Questions. Please never split up the Burt, Domi, Nylander line. They're so much fun every time they're on the ice. Thank you for your question. I know that's not a question and it's a comment, but I agree with it so much that I decided to leave it anyway. It helps the Max Domi, who has shown over his career to be a good player, is playing like a really good player. And William Nylander, dude, I gotta tell you, I was a little worried. After he signed that contract, he hit a slump. And I know slumps happen, but that slump happened at an 
awful, peculiar time, that slump is over. He is right back to being just a world beater. From Tim, most dominant opening period we've ever seen this season. I mean, think of a better one. I'm really struggling here. I know they've had some hot starts where they got off like, you know, two nothing, three nothing, maybe even four nothing. I want to say they had a game against the Sharks where they were up like seven nothing. But again, in the context, it's Vegas. I know they're a little shorthanded right now, but it's Vegas. Their goalie, their decor, it's Vegas. It's in Vegas. It's second half of a back-to-back. -back. Within the context of the game itself, I, I'm really struggling to think of a better one. This one's interesting. Does Keefe dare change his lines now? You know what I loved that Keefe did in this game? It was only once or twice he went to a specialty line, like after a power play or after a penalty kill, he likes to put out a strange line. No blender, no, oh, we're in this zone and that's, it. no. No blender. What line are you putting out? One? Attaboy one. There you go. What, what is it? It's, oh, it's three. It's three. You're skipping. Okay. Out goes three. Four, two. Listen, there are situations where it makes sense. Yeah, okay. Have Camp take this face off. It's in the D zone. Whatever. I understand that. These lines are playing so well together. You can't break them up. Except Keith is inevitably going to have to because Cali Yarncroak is going to come back and he was a fantastic leaf before he got hurt and I have no idea where to put him because who's playing bad and isn't this the million dollar question should the plans change based on this six game stretch or what even was the plan before it I think the plan was just to evaluate and you know if it looks like you can go for it if it looks like you're dominating everyone and you need something to put you over the top. Teams will spend to help get you over the top. We've seen it a bunch of times. Last year, I mean, it's not like, uh, you know, at least one around finally, but they did kind of empty their cupboard. They went out and got Jake McCabe, who they still have, Ryan O'Reilly, etc. They're probably not going to be able to have a trade deadline like that again. But like, I'm looking at this Leaf roster, I'm looking at the forward group. I'm pretty satisfied with the forward group, dude. The goaltending, once you get Joseph Wall in there, assuming he does well, Samsonov's been doing so well. I like Benoit McCabe. I like Brody Lilligren. Riley and, mm, like, Ry imagine, imagine Riley Rasmus Anderson. I think what the Leafs' plan has always been is to try to compete, obviously, but with moves that have the future in mind. Example, going out and getting Jake McCabe. Yes, you are giving up significant futures, but you also get this player on your team for two seasons at half retained. Jake McCabe's costing the Leafs $2 million against the cap. That's awesome. Anderson has more than one year left on his deal. Would be easily the best D partner that Riley ever had. Certainly the best right-handed one. And if Riley and Anderson start to click, ah, uh, that's a pretty good team, man. So I think the plan was always compete this season, look to the future, and I just think this win streak makes you more confident in this group. And maybe you do sprinkle a little more on there. I don't, I don't think this is the difference between spending a first round pick and not, but you know, maybe it's an extra, I don't know, third, fourth, a little something extra to get you over the hump. All right, folks, we got a brand new Steve Dangle podcast coming tomorrow on the SDPN YouTube channel, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, everywhere you get your podcasts. And if you want to become an SDP VIP, you should! You get a bonus episode every week and some other fun stuff that we're cooking up. Subscribe, or uh, what is it? Join as a member on the SDPN YouTube channel. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts and... We got a feed, finally, on Spotify. You can be an SDP VIP there as well. For now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends, SDP VIP. Drew, can, can you put the button? Is there a button? Can you put a button? Oh, yeah, there's the button. Hey.